From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. Thanks for joining us this morning. It is Martin Luther King Jr. Day, halfway through the month of January. Where did it all go? Let's get things started. We're so happy to be able to continue to keep the dream alive. Remembering a civil rights icon and the message on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, our country and the Bay paying tribute to his life and legacy. Some of us are not going to make it, some have already left, and some want to shut down already. Fighting for Fruitvale, small businesses have had enough in Oakland, and now they're banding together to battle crime. It's the process of making people uncomfortable where they're at, how they're living. Pushing back against the demands, North Bay mobile home owners struck between a rock and a hard place, rent soaring. Here's Prescott. The middle, it's going to be picked off, and no one in front of him. Darnell Savage. Touchdown. Bring on the cheeseheads. The Packers stun the Cowboys and are now set for a clash at Levi's. The Niners getting ready for their first test of the playoffs. Is anybody ordering a cheeseburger in Dallas this morning or this afternoon? Good morning. I'm Reed Cowan. What a game. And I'm Nicole Zalumis. I'm so excited that the Packers are coming to town. <laughs> we welcome you because we couldn't ask for a better matchup. Yeah, we'll eat the cheese. They are overmatched. Our mm -hmm. Niners are going to have their way with them this weekend. But why don't we take a live look outside on this Monday morning? And there's going to be a little bit of weather for the game this weekend. But right now, things are looking nice and clear. Jessica, what's in store for us this week? You know, we are starting off this Monday nice and mild, but yes, as we look ahead to that weekend forecast, there's more rain right around the corner. There's more rain right around the corner as early as tomorrow. Let's dive into that right now, starting off with these morning conditions throughout the Bay Area. A blanket of clouds as we wake up over the Santa Clara Valley with some higher clouds above that too. Now, as we head into this afternoon, that lower level of clouds is going to bleed off. We're currently sitting in the 40s right now in areas like San Jose, Los Gatos, all the way off into the East Bay near Antioch and along 101 heading up from Redwood City, stretching into San Francisco too. Now, the moment we go past the Golden Gate Bridge over into Nevada, Petaluma stretching up into Santa Rosa, we're actually under a dense fog advisory right now. Those clouds are a lot lower to the surface level, starting at the surface level, actually, allowing for those foggy conditions to last into the next couple hours. Now, visibility is low, also, I should mind you, or I should let you know that. So keep in mind as we head into this afternoon, that'll start to lift. But right now, if you're trying to head out the door, the time now is 7.02. Visibility is pretty poor in areas like St. Helena, Napa, all the way over into Santa Rosa. It will improve as we head into this afternoon. We're all left with partly cloudy skies throughout the Bay Area for our forecast today and tomorrow morning as we kick off the morning hours. But then light scattered showers start rolling their way in, starting up in the North Bay around 10 a.m. And that's only going to increase as we head into the afternoon hours tomorrow. I'll time that out for you for your Tuesday forecast coming up in a bit. For now, over to you. All right, Jess, thank you so much. And good morning to all of you who are about to hit the road. This is the reality. This is a live look at the Bay Bridge where we can tell you there's a high wind advisory in effect right now. So especially if you're in one of those high profile vehicles, just be very, very careful. About a 10-minute drive in the wind from the maze to Highway 101. Looking back at that crash we talked about earlier on Pacheco Boulevard, looks like they got it cleared. But then another crash reported on Highway 4. We'll get more information on that in our next report. And for our mass transit users out there, no delays, but make sure to check those schedules for any changes. And take note that new VTA service changes take place as well today on the holiday. Well, right now, rescue crews are in Half Moon Bay water searching for those on board a small plane crash. And our Sean Chitness is live near the scene at the Half Moon Bay Airport. Sean, what are you seeing out there? Well, Reed, hopefully we will be able to learn more. And of course, the team that is working on this may be able to see more as the sun comes up. You may be able to notice that there is a well, U.S. Coast Guard helicopter behind me, perhaps part of the team that was looking last night. We understand that this all started around 7 yesterday when there were calls coming in about <clears throat> this crash. Soon after, someone spotted the two-engine plane two miles away from Half Moon Bay Airport. And we can see a search team looking for the plane in the water last night with challenging conditions because of the time and of course because it was dark. They located the plane about an hour into the search but they were still trying to find anyone who was on board the plane as of last night. Emergency response teams were on site to assist in the search from the ground as well and according to the San Mateo Sheriff's Office the initial call said a small two-propeller plane was flying erratically and those reporting the emergency said
said they thought that they heard the engine sputter before they lost sight of the plane. So as of this morning, we still don't know the identities of who was on the plane and how many people were on board. That's something we hope to learn uh, in the hours ahead. We do know, though, that the plane took off from the East Bay. Reed, back to you. Sean, thank you so much. A live report from Half Moon Bay. Rescuers rushed to the scene of a car into a residential building in San Francisco last night. You got to see this video. Uh, they got there and saw quite a scene. You can see right there the smashed up vehicle. Quite a dramatic picture here and a backstory to tell you about. That car flew from the raised Harrison Street Highway 80 ramp right into a building below. It plummeted onto the Sterling Street on ramp. People helping out got one woman to the hospital with major injuries. Those who survived say the building felt like it had been hit with an earthquake. More work accomplished in the investigation into the murder of Oakland police officer Tuan Lay. Marquise Cooper is now the third suspect charged in this murder. Cooper slapped, in fact, with 16 felonies, including first degree murder. Officer Lay protecting his community while responding to reports of a burglary at a cannabis dispensary, only to meet a hail of gunfire. Cooper will face a judge in court tomorrow for his arraignment. On the third Monday of every January, the United States celebrates a man revered for his leadership of the civil rights movement. Of course, we're talking about Martin Luther King Jr. His service and nonviolent methods push back against racism and segregation in the 50s and 60s. Despite all his hard work, MLK Day didn't become federally recognized until 1986, nearly 20 years after his assassination. And today, the city of El Cerrito will host its 35th annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration. Organizers are proud to say they are the longest consecutive MLK Day event in the state since they didn't stop during the pandemic. Arshan Chitnis has more on the history of this unique celebration here in the Bay Area. A tradition marking 35 years in 2024, it's a celebration that brings together a city like few other events can. It is vitally important for all cities, big and small, to come together in peaceful protests, in peaceful gatherings to promote unity within the community. Protest that continues today with the annual March through El Cerrito honoring those in the early years who had to push for MLK Day to be recognized. Even after the birthday of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was declared a national holiday in the 1980s, the city of El Cerrito did not officially acknowledge the holiday right away. It is important for the smaller cities as well as the bigger cities to continue to help and promote to keep the dream alive. We're so happy to be able to continue to keep the dream alive in the city of El Cerrito. And as one generation passes the torch to another in this community, the impact of Dr. King's words weigh heavily on those born well after this celebration began. It's very powerful to me as a young person because a lot of my civic drive and engagement has come from this organization and this program. Inspiring new leaders to get involved locally and pay more attention to the issues happening across the street and around the nation. It's an amazing community building opportunity and the fact that this has been 35 years strong and only continues to grow is extremely empowering for me. While its origins may be one of division, today city leaders say no other gathering brings El Cerrito together like its MLK celebration. This event has uh, such deep roots in our community that um, it's great to see it come up every year um, just because you uh, you really find a unity in it. And still, after 35 years, this community knows that it's helping to move us all closer, but more must be done to help Dr. King's words become a reality. He would probably think that, oh, wow, we've made a few steps forward, but we have a lot of steps forward to go. And he would be proud of those of us who are continuing to keep his dream alive. Well, you can also join in on events happening across the Bay celebrating MLK Day. Oakland Public Works is hosting dozens of volunteer events, including one at Clinton Park at 9 a.m. At 11 a.m., the NorCal Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Community Foundation will lead a commemorative march 
That begins at San Francisco Caltrain Station and ends at Yerba Buena Gardens. Caltrain is making traveling easier with their NorCal MLK Celebration Train, which takes riders from San Jose to events in San Francisco. Martin Luther King Jr. Day is recognized as a day of service and action. And even over the weekend, we saw people across the bay giving back to the community. In Vallejo, volunteers spent the morning planting trees. The city hosted the event near City Hall. It was actually supposed to happen on Saturday, but the rain pushed it back until yesterday. In San Francisco, nearly 100 volunteers helped clean up the Tenderloin neighborhood and gave out essential items to homeless residents. The event was hosted by Glide Center for Social Justice alongside Glide Memorial Church. I think it's important for us, you know, to be part of the world community. You know, not to uh, live in silos, but for all of us uh, that are here to come together to solve those issues that are, you know, affecting all of us together because we're all, all impacted together. Congress passed the King Holiday and Service Act in 1994, transforming MLK Day into a National Day of Service in honor of Dr. King.